So here we are, and currently uh, we should start discussion about first complex structural equation modeling uh, that is called path analysis, uh, as uh, it has different names uh, from general structural equation modeling. It means uh, that there is also some specialized uh, literature uh, designed to pass analysis. And also, uh, maybe fortunately for you, uh, in JMOV environment, there is also special option, uh, which is direct preparation of pass analysis. So if you would like to prepare pass analysis model, it's not necessary to remember how to write uh, programming code uh, through Lavan, but uh, you can go directly to SEM. And here uh, there is one special option, which is called pass analysis. So pass analysis can be performed directly in Jmovi by clicking module, uh, which is present here. Once again, this SEM uh, is uh, uh, based on some additional package, which is called SEMLJ, which must be implemented into Jmovi, um, but uh, as we implemented last time, so there was no need uh, to implement once again. And here uh, you can apply for pass analysis. Uh, I would like also to mention uh, that there is no such special module for J so you are not able to find pass analysis in JASP. In JASP, you can find slightly similar, uh, but uh, it's not the same uh, option, uh, which is designed for so-called mediation analysis. But currently, we are not discussing about mediation analysis. Uh, so that's why uh, Jamovi is uh, maybe better choice for us. So before we start to enter into Jamovi, I will add uh, some uh, theory uh, and also uh, some uh, uh, basic terms that are related uh, to pass analysis. First of all, uh, I would like to say, uh, and here we have some simple example of pass analysis, that pass analysis is nothing more than combination of more than uh, one regression equation together. So we apply two or three more regressions together into one complex model. Here we have a very small example. And before we start to discuss about some key terms uh, we will be using later, I would like to ask you uh, if you can uh, uh, take this picture uh, as an example, how many regression equations are here present in this picture for this model? And what are these regressions? What are dependence and independence for these regressions? So how many regression equations are here? Two? OK, first one, dependent I expect is y1, and two independents, x1, x2, and second one, regression, y2 is dependent, and y1 and x1 is independent. Yeah? OK, so, and. Before we start uh, to discuss further, I would like also to repeat basic fact that it is expected that if some variable is dependent, so it means at least one, uh, one headed arrow is going into this variable, you should assign or the software will do it for you, random error. So that's why here we have random error A random error, uh, second one is here as these two variables are explained and this explanation is never complete. And that's why there are some unexplained variance which is hidden in this random error, or sometimes it is called residual. So that's only about these small e's uh, that are related uh, uh, to these two dependent variables. And now uh, we would go into slightly tricky step. Let's take this y1 variable, and it is dependent variable for the first regression. So here it is dependent variable. But for the second regression, you can see that y1 is influencing y2, so it's independent. And now the question is how we could name this variable if it is in one regression dependent and in the second regression independent. So that's why we would slightly differentiate previous discussion about uh, independence and dependence and we will try to find some alternative names. So that's why uh, we would, uh, for today and for the rest of lectures, uh, will not discuss about dependence and independence, and we will use alternative uh, terms. So here it is. We will be discussing about so-called exogenous and endogenous variables. 
later. Uh, we will also differentiate, but uh, I expect uh, it will be next lecture, uh, between direct and indirect effects. And we know uh, that random errors are always related to those variables for which we still are using uh, uh, definition of uh, dependent variable. So uh, before uh, I will go uh, to the rest, uh, I will say that exogenous variable is the variable for which there is no explanation by the model. So here for this simple picture, x1, x2 are two exogenous. They are not influenced by the model. There is no one-headed error going into these variables. So these are two exogenous variables. And I would like to say that maybe some more variables are exogenous in this model. Can you help me to find these? Which variables are also exogenous here? For which two variables there is no one-headed arrow going into this variable? Here we are. These random errors are also exogenous. So they are not influenced or explained by the model. So these are only helping us explaining the variants of the Y1 and Y2. So here we have one, two, three, four exogenous variables. So predictors classically are exogenous uh, in regression and also random errors in nearly all structural equation models are exogenous. So uh, that's it. And here we have also two endogenous variables. Endogenous means it is inside the model, somehow influenced by the model. So we will try to explain these variables. Y1 and Y2 are two endogenous variables. And I would like also uh, to say, and we know about uh, this uh, from previous discussion uh, during the last lecture, uh, that we are also differentiating the shapes uh, that are related uh, to variables. If I'm using uh, squares or rectangles, so these variables are present in my data matrix. So we call these variables as observed or manifest variables. Once again, they are present in my data matrix. So if I go back uh, to my SEM uh, 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 data, I have here uh, well-being, depression, social support, and proactive coping as four observed variables. And we know, and uh, we will discuss uh, about this topic uh, also later, uh, especially in uh, confirmatory factor analysis model, that we can also uh, include variables that are not present in my data matrix. And we call these variables as latent variables. Classical latent variables are these residuals or random errors. So you can see that circles or sometimes ellipses are uh, usually assigned to these uh, uh, unobserved variables. And for previous discussion about exploratory factor analysis, you also know that for factors, so it means some unobserved uh, patterns behind the scene. We are also using uh, these symbols. So it means circles or ellipses. So factors will be also classical uh, unobserved or latent variables. So that's about exogenous and endogenous variables and about latent and uh, manifest variables. Please do not mix these two typologies as exogenous variable uh, could be latent as well as observed and opposite is also true. Uh, so uh, these two typologies are not connected somehow. Uh, these are two different typologies of our varieties. So that's it. And I will briefly discuss, uh, uh, but it will be only introduction. Uh, we will discuss more about it uh, at the beginning of the next lecture about so-called direct and indirect effects. I guess that these names are self-explanatory. So if you see these names, you are maybe uh, very easily uh, able to understand. So if I ask you whether, for example, this link for X1 on Y2 is direct or indirect, can somebody help me? Is it direct or indirect effect? Direct. direct. It is directly connecting X1 and Y2. So that's some direct effect of X2 on Y2. But 
if I would like to know what is the effect, for example, of X2 on Y2, there is no direct link here as there is no expectation. There is some direct link, so it is uh, uh, something that is flowing from some theory behind, but you can see that X2 is influencing directly Y1 and Y1 is influencing directly Y2. And here we have indirect effect of X2 on Y2, which is mediated. That's why we usually call these models as mediation analysis, which is mediated by Y1. So that's indirect effect. And you can see, for example, that X1 is influencing directly Y2 according to this model, but also indirectly through mediation of Y1. So there is some direct effect, there is also some indirect effect, and maybe uh, it could be nice to compare these two effects and to see whether direct or indirect is bigger. And I will also add one more term uh, we will be discussing later. If you take direct and indirect effect together, we call it as total effect. So three related terms, direct, indirect, and total effects uh, we will be evaluating next time. So uh, this is, I would say, slightly new step uh, in comparison with previous discussion about regression models. As for regression model, all effects are direct and uh, it's not necessary to distinguish between exogenous and endogenous. We need only uh, independent dependent. So currently for general structural situation modeling or uh, here uh, precisely for pass analysis, uh, it is maybe slightly more difficult, but please take into account that these uh, expressions such as exogenous, endogenous, latent, manifest, uh, direct, indirect effects uh, are classical uh, terms uh, for structural equation modeling. So uh, here we are, and currently uh, we have, I would say, uh, knowledge enough uh, to prepare some real models and to learn how to build a model in Chemovi environment, and of course, how to evaluate the model. Uh, so it means how to interpret results. So uh, that's all. Uh, if you have some questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Uh, and uh, I would continue uh, with some real life example, which will be once again based uh, uh, on my data file. And uh, we will try to perform pass analysis or uh, I would say uh, we will redo past analysis, which was uh, previously uh, performed and also published in some article. So here we are, and I would take as a working example, uh, replication of the study, which was published uh, by Vatsulikova and me uh, in 2019. And here we have a full picture uh, of our model. So before uh, I would start uh, to prepare such model uh, in Chemovi environment, I will show you today uh, two options how we can prepare this model in Chemovi environment. One will be based on clicking, uh, or uh, I mean some user-friendly manual. Second one will be based on uh, some typing uh, of uh, commands. Uh, we would go uh, through this model and we will try to find how many regressions are present here uh, how many exogenous and endogenous variables are present here. And then uh, we will try uh, to somehow implement uh, this model once again uh, by two uh, different ways in Chemovi. So my first question is, how many regression equations uh, are here uh, present in this picture or in this model? Three? Okay, and what are, once again, uh, old uh, terminology, uh, dependent variables, or uh, currently uh, we know uh, these are endogenous variables uh, for these three regressions. So regression number one, PC is dependent and uh, SS is independent. Okay, that's the first regression. Second one, WB and two predictors, SS and PC. And the last one, depression is based on WB only, at least directly. You know about uh, this discussion about indirect effects, etc. Once again, we will postpone this discussion uh, to the later uh, uh, steps. Uh, and uh, that's about three regressions. Uh, so how many uh, endogenous variables here we have? And what are these? Endogenous, once again, explained by the model. Three. 
Yeah, and this is PC, well-being, and depression. And if I say that I have more than one uh, endogenous variable, once again, we won't be using uh, uh, for further lectures uh, discussion about uh, uh, independent and independent, as it is confusing here. Uh, so it means that if I have more endogenous variables, it means also that I will get, for example, more R squares uh, than only one. As in classical regression, you have only one endogenous or dependent variable, and that's one. Yeah, that's why you have only one R square. So it means one amount of explained variance of one endogenous or dependent variable. But here, if I have one, two, three uh, endogenous PC, WB, and DEP. That's why I would get also three R squares. So it means three levels of explanation. So it means that maybe the best explained would be depression, second uh, uh, best would be explained well being, and maybe uh, that uh, uh, very poor results I can find for the explanation uh, for PC. That's my imagination. Uh, we will uh, find three results, but it's necessary to know that for every endogenous variable in structural equation modeling, I am able to evaluate the level of the explanation usually by R square. Only I would like to say uh, that in factor analysis models, and you know also about it uh, from previous discussion about exploratory factor analysis, we are usually not discussing about R square, but uh, in uh, factor analysis, we usually call these R squares as communalities. So communality is the level of explained variance or is R square uh, in classical regression style. This, these are only different names for the same step. And of course, you, I hope so, uh, you know that we try to explain as much as possible by our model. So that would be my main goal. So that's about explanations. And uh, I would like also uh, to uh, ask you, how many uh, exogenous variables uh, we can find here and what are these? So SS is the only one exogenous variable which is manifest. And we have three latent variables, these residual terms. So it means E1, E2, E3, yeah? Here it is. And uh, I would like also to add uh, one more uh, property, which is related uh, to this model or this picture. So uh, I know it's uh, quite small one, but you can see that for these links of random errors, and we will discuss about these properties later uh, in detail, uh, there is small number, which is number one. So it is expected that these random errors are every time linked by unity or by one uh, to these endogenous variables. So that's classical style of fixing links of random errors or residuals to individual endogenous variables. Usually software packages uh, prepare uh, these fixing uh, automatically. So there is no need for you uh, to assign it. Uh, and I would like also to say uh, that this picture uh, is based on uh, a package which is called IBM SPSS AMOS. Uh, uh, and I will show you uh, capabilities of this IBM SPSS AMOS uh, uh, in some next lectures uh, for you to see how it works in uh, IBM SPSS AMOS uh, to have uh, bigger uh, knowledge about structural equation modeling uh, packages. Uh, according to my opinion, uh, but of course it's subjective, these pictures uh, from AMOS uh, are uh, the nicest pictures uh, uh, that are performed in structural equation modeling uh, packages. So, so uh, that's only about graphical capabilities. Okay, so uh, that's the example. Uh, here we have uh, the picture of our model. And now uh, we will try uh, to perform uh, this model uh, in uh, my data set uh, via Gemovi. And in Gemovi, we have two options as we discussed. First one is based on, I would say, clicking uh, uh, option, and maybe that's quite easy uh, to follow. And once again, you can find directly by SAM and pass analysis. Second one option is based on previous discussion about programming code in Laban. So you could go into SEM or syntax. 
Uh, I will start with uh, path analysis as the first step. Uh, as it will be maybe easier for you. Uh, and then uh, I will switch uh, into SEM syntax uh, as well uh, to show you how it works. Uh, and I guess it's quite easy as you will only add uh, three regression equations uh, into the model. Uh, so it won't be complicated, I hope so. So uh, that's about uh, Jamovi. And uh, now uh, I will try to prepare this model. So here it is uh, uh, for us. So uh, once again, we have only one exogenous uh, manifest variable, which is SS, and three endogenous uh, variables. So that's necessary to remember. So if you enter uh, into pass analysis dialog, here it is. Uh, I must say this is the only one uh, pass analysis dialog uh, uh, which is I'm familiar in uh, statistical packages. I'm not uh, 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 aware uh, that another package uh, would implement uh, such uh, easy uh, style uh, to prepare pass analysis by clicking only. So you can see that here, uh, this dialog is distinguishing three types of variables, endogenous, exogenous uh, factors, and exogenous coverage. So it is somehow differentiating whether your exogenous variable is nominal or ordinal, or whether it is uh, treated as cardinal. So that's only uh, necessary to differentiate. Uh, we treat all these variables in my data set as cardinal. So that's why we would need only endogenous variables, part of this command, uh, or this dialog, sorry for that, uh, and exogenous coverage. And we will not discuss about these exogenous factors, but it's only technical style. So once again, what are endogenous and exogenous uh, variables uh, in my picture? So there is only one exogenous, SS. So that's why I would take SS as the first one, and I would move it to exogenous coverage. Here it is. And then I have uh, one, two, three, P, C, W, B, and D, E, P uh, endogenous. So that's why I would move these into endogenous variables. So here it is, first one, second one, and the third one. And currently, still, uh, Jamovi, or uh, Lavan language uh, from R, is expecting that we will prepare the model of uh, pass analysis uh, that is present here. So we would need to follow uh, logic that for PC, there would be only one predictor, which is social support. For well-being, there would be two predictors, social support and proactive coping. And for depression, there would be one predictor, which is well-being only. So I would need to go down slightly in this dialogue and uh, to define here it is called as endogenous models. According to my opinion, that's uh, very nice and easy uh, to handle. So uh, you can see that it is expecting three equations, one for WB, one for DEP, and the third one for PC. So if you uh, click uh, into the first one for well-being, once again, well-being uh, uh, should be uh, related on social support and proactive coping. So I would need to move social support as the first one and then proactive coping. So please use only this uh, one headed arrow. There is also one headed arrow with uh, some more options, uh, which is uh, possible uh, to apply for interactions uh, and some other effects. Uh, we won't uh, discuss about it uh, in these uh, models. So here it is prepared while being based on social support and proactive coping. Second part related to depression, and once again, depression should be based on well-being only. So I would move only well-being here. And the last one part of the model is that proactive coping should be explained by social support. So social support uh, should be uh, moved to the right for proactive coping. And currently, if everything uh, is performed, uh, so my model uh, is fully designed here. So uh, here we have a description of the model. So you can see WB tilde SS plus PC, DEP tilde WB and PC tilde SS. So three regressions. Uh, 
Uh, and if you would like uh, to perform the same model by general SEM syntax module, uh, you can, for example, copy uh, these three rows or you can type it, uh, that's your decision. And before we would go into some more details, uh, we will try to evaluate the model uh, as the whole. Uh, so here we have a description of our user model. So currently, chi-square is 3.28 and degrees of freedom is equal to two. Uh, first of all, I would like maybe to explain why we have two degrees of freedom uh, and uh, how we could compute uh, degrees of freedom. So first of all, originally, we have one, two, three, four observed variables. So that's my data matrix. So if I go to data, I can see four columns. And currently, all of these uh, are present in my model. So if I have four variables, it means that original sources of information are four variances. And also, for four variables, I can compute uh, four times three divided by two, that's six covariances. So if you have k variables, number of covariants that could be computed is k multiplied by k minus one divided by two. If you do not believe me, go back uh, into your introductory mathematics uh, from secondary school and uh, uh, you will find these uh, expressions. And if you have 10 original pieces of information, you need to know how many pieces of information I would like to get from my modeling perspective. So I would be expecting to evaluate this slope, this slope, this slope, and this slope. So one, two, three, four slopes, yeah? So I have currently 10 minus four, six degrees of freedom still. And I would like also to evaluate one, two, three, four, variances for every endogenous variable, I'm evaluating or computing variances. That's a rule for structural equation modeling. So if I subtract 10 minus four slopes minus four variances, I have two. And that's the number of degrees of freedom for my current model. It means also that I can add some more estimated quantity I would like maybe to estimate also relationship for PC and depression direct one. So if I would add also this one into the model, it would still have one degrees of freedom and I would be able to evaluate this model by this chi-square test and related uh, techniques. So here it is. And currently chi-square 3.3, two degrees of freedom and P is 0.2 approximately. And my question is, whether my model fits to my data or not, what could be my conclusion based on this uh, chi-square test, uh, uh, which is present in structural equation modeling as the first output. So is it possible that these relationships uh, for social support, productive coping, well-being, and depression uh, for Czech students uh, are possible or not? So can somebody help me? If p-value is big one, model fits or doesn't fit to my data? Model yeah, model fits. Uh, it is quite big. I'm not rejecting no hypothesis. Maybe that my model is not the best one, but still I can apply this model to my data. That's my conclusion. And uh, before I would go uh, further, uh, we will discuss uh, briefly uh, about uh, evaluation of uh, structural equation models. Uh, and uh, here uh, uh, we will discuss about the evaluation of uh, past analysis. So first of all, there is overall evaluation and we will discuss mostly about tests and related criteria. Uh, then uh, we will go also, uh, but it would be a discussion next uh, week uh, uh, to evaluate individual parameters their values, uh, statistical tests related uh, confidence intervals. And we will also discuss later about possible changes in the model. Uh, and these models are proposed by so-called modification indices. So here uh, I will discuss about uh, overall evaluation of the model. So for simple models and for small data sets, we can apply this chi-square test. It works quite uh, good. If your model is simple, and once again, your data file is maximum in hundreds of units. 
So currently, for this model, I mean for past analysis for my data, uh, it is quite good uh, to believe in two chi score test. For slightly more complex models or bigger data sets, this chi score test is nearly every time having small p-values, so it means rejecting uh, our models, in spite of the fact that models are quite good. So that's why we do not believe and we do not apply usually this chi score test for some complex models and for bigger data sets. And that's why we would be using some alternative criteria. Uh, they have many, many different names, but uh, I can differentiate at least two groups of these criteria. One of these I would call as criteria of quality. And for these, uh, the bigger, the better form uh, is usually uh, applied. Usually uh, values above 0 0.9 or 0 0.95 are quite good uh, uh, as cutoff criteria for the quality of the model. Uh, as uh, I would like to mention some of these, AGFI, MNFI, TLI, CFI are maybe the most common, and especially CFI and TLI are currently the most recommended. So if you would publish uh, the paper uh, based on structurally efficient modeling, mostly you would be applying TLI and CFI for the evaluation of a model. If you would like to get uh, these values uh, uh, in uh, the output, uh, so I guess uh, that you need to ask for some additional outputs. Uh, so I will try to find where it is stored here in Pass Analysis Dialog. Uh, uh, so dun, 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 dun. it's not prepared here um, by default. No, it's not. Uh, so I'll try to find it. Uh, if you will be quicker, uh, please let me know. Lenses coverance is not parameters options, so not included here. Maybe it's not included here in this pass analysis dialog. Sorry for that. Uh, here it is not. Factors coding, scaling. Uh, so I'm sorry uh, uh, to say that these criteria are not present here. So I will show you these criteria directly in SEM uh, general uh, comments. Maybe uh, that uh, those who are creating Chemovi uh, were expecting that through pass analysis, these alternative criteria are not necessary. Uh, so uh, that's why they are not present here. Uh, sorry for that, but only uh, true of uh, uh, closely related uh, uh, criteria are present here, and they are measuring error of my model. So they have just opposite form, uh, the lower, the better, and usually values close to zero uh, are uh, those uh, that are expected uh, for quality models. So here you have uh, two of these, uh, first one, and uh, the most common uh, in SEM is called uh, RMSEA, uh, this shortage stands for root mean square error approximation. And uh, there is also a uh, very uh, common applied SRMR, uh, which are standardized residuals uh, uh, somehow recomputed. And for RMSEA, uh, recommendation in current literature is usually below 0 0.05, but it is too strict. And mostly recommendation in current literature is 0 0.08 eight or lower. If you can see for my current model, RMSEA is 0 0.04, if I round up, still below all these cutoffs. And SRMR, uh, there is only usually one recommendation in current literature below 0 0.05. And here we can see uh, 0.02 uh, approximately, so still below. So according to these criteria, all these uh, uh, Criteria are saying, okay, your model is quite good enough. So uh, that's basic evaluation. And once again, uh, in next step, uh, we will switch into general uh, stem syntax uh, model and we will uh, recompute this model. And uh, we will add also the CFIs, TLSIs, uh, and other stuff. But before we would go further, uh, I would spend some time uh, inside this dialogue. And uh, there is one more, and I would say very nice option, uh, which is showing you the picture. So pass diagram, uh, if you enter into and ask for pass diagram. So you should see uh, in a few seconds, uh, picture for your model. So at least uh, you can compare uh, whether the model uh, is uh, 
following uh, your expectation. So here it is. Uh, PC uh, is influ social support is influencing uh, proactive coping, proactive coping, uh, well-being, uh, etc. I will only uh, change uh, the appearance uh, of the picture. I hope so. So here it is. Uh, and you can see that for all these links or slopes, there is also the evaluation of by default coefficients. So these are unstandardized coefficients. If you would like to recompute it into standardized coefficients, and we call these uh, uh, as betas in regression, that's why it is called betas here. So you would recompute uh, betas directly. And you can also assign labels or uh, you can ask for no description uh, for these links. And you can also add residuals uh, to the picture. Uh, that's uh, last one option. So here you can see also residuals and their values uh, in a standardized or unstandardized version. And there is also uh, some graphical options uh, to change uh, uh, the size of these shapes. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, you can change uh, shapes uh, into uh, squares from rectangles, et cetera, et cetera. So that's your decision. So uh, that's about, uh, I would say, quite nice dialogue for pass analysis. And here we have also uh, some outputs, and we would go into details of these outputs next week, uh, about individual coefficients. There are standard errors, confidence intervals, standardized values. These are betas. Uh, and also uh, the evaluation uh, by uh, test. Uh, uh, so it means uh, these uh, small z and p values. Uh, uh, so this is the test for every individual coefficient. But once again, we will discuss about these coefficients next time. Today, I would like only to enter uh, into the second uh, possibility how we can perform pass analysis in JMOV. Uh, and uh, we will uh, create uh, the model uh, uh, by uh, these three uh, rows. So it means uh, we will be typing WB tilde SS plus PC, DEP tilde WB, and PC tilde SS. Uh, it's possible, uh, I guess, uh, to make a copy. Uh, of this uh, full text. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if it would work directly uh, into SEM dialog. So maybe we can use uh, Microsoft Word or another uh, tool. So once again, SEM and syntax. And I will try to copy uh, the table. Uh, yeah, here it is, uh, but it copy all these outputs. So that's not uh, very nice uh, uh, for this first insight, uh, but I can erase all uh, rows that are not present here. Oh, but it erase also the rest. So I will use once again Word as I promised. Uh, it would be much easier uh, to find only uh, three rows uh, for the model itself. Yeah, here it is uh, at the end. Uh, so this is the first equation, second equation, And the last one equation, of course, if you like, you can type it. So these three uh, are currently uh, copied uh, into uh, Jamovi. And uh, if you uh, take all these three or type it uh, so you can run the model. But before I run the model, uh, I would ask for some advanced uh, output. So if you go into output options, I would ask uh, for additional fit measures. So it means the CFIs, TLIs, and other staff. And if I ask for this, uh, so I can click into green arrow or uh, use uh, control plus shift plus enter and run the model. So I would hope so get the same result for chi-square test as it is the same model. So 3.3 .3 is chi-square test statistics, uh, two degrees of freedom and 0 0.2 approximately p-value. And I would like to go down uh, to find uh, CFIs, TLSIs and other uh, uh, alternative uh, uh, values uh, for the evaluation of uh, the quality of the model. So here we have the section which is called additional outputs. And here we have comparison of so-called user model and baseline model. And CFI and TLI are first two. And once again, basic recommendation is that uh, CFI and TLI should be at least above 0 
here we have the value 0 0.997, 0 0.990. So it seems that my model is, according to these criteria, good enough. Also, you can see alternative uh, uh, NFI here, uh, very uh, good value, uh, and many, many other uh, values uh, could be fine here. Uh, for example, there is no AGFI here, um, but only GFI in the next table called other fit indices. So here we have uh, these alternatives. And once again, for more complex model and bigger data sets, uh, there is no choice. So it means we usually do not apply uh, chi-square test, but instead of uh, this, we apply these alternative uh, fit indices, mostly CFI, TNR, TLI, and also uh, indices for <coughs> measurement error uh, or error of the model, uh, RMSEA or SRMR, which are present here in the table called fit indices. So uh, that's, uh, I would say, uh, first introduction uh, into pass analysis uh, for today. Uh, next week, uh, we will discuss in detail about the evaluation of individual coefficients for the model. Uh, and uh, we will also try to somehow modify my model uh, of pass analysis. And then uh, we will switch uh, to, I would say, slightly uh, advanced models, uh, models uh, of uh, confirmatory factor analysis. So that's all for today.